Water is draining from the bottom of a cone-shaped funnel at a rate of 0 0.03 feet cubed per second. So our cone-shaped funnel is like this. There we are. And that's a little tricky to work with. So let me just make it two-dimensional. So that's the 3D version. And here is the 2D version of my cone. And they're supposed to be the same size since one is 2D, one is 3D. So there it is. Those are my cones. You know what? I think I give up on the three-dimensional version. But you get the idea. The cross-section of the cone or a side of the cone would look like this. The height of the funnel is two feet. So here I know this is two feet. And the radius at the top of the funnel is one foot. So right here I have one foot. At what rate is the height of the water in the funnel changing when the height of the water is one foot? So right here we find our goal. So we want to find, oh, and that's not dh, excuse me, let me fix that. We want to find the rate at which the water is changing. Oh, we do, excuse me, we want to find the height, the rate at which the height is changing when the height of the water is one half. Okay, so that sounds a little confusing. There's a couple heights there. So one is about here, one half is about here. So if we pretend that the water level's here at one half foot, so at six inches, we want to know how the height is changing, so how it's going down. So this is dh over dt, and that's what we're looking for, dh over dt. Because remember, the water is just dripping out of this and creating a big puddle here, and the water is going out in this direction. So we're looking for the change in the height of the water when the height is one half, and we're given this other piece of information here. We're given that the water is draining at this rate, so we know that the change in volume over time is negative 0.03 feet cubed per second. So let's set this up, and I'm gonna erase some of this extra information we don't need. So at least now we know what we're looking for. I'm gonna erase this, there we go. And we're looking for dh over dt. So let's start with the volume of a cone. It's pi over three r squared h. So dv over dt is pi over three. And then here I need to apply the product rule along with implicit differentiation. So that's two r times dr over dt plus r squared times dh over dt. And before I go on, let's just make sure we've done this correctly. We know what the change in volume over time is. That's here. Great. Um, and I left off an H here. There we go. We also know what the height is. Great. We know what dh over dt is. Great. But here is a problem. dr over dt. Hmm. Well, that would be an extra quantity to figure out. Another tricky part is we don't know what the radius is. And the radius is in a couple spots at this point. We know that the height of the water is going to be one foot, but I have no idea what the radius is. So I think there's something off here. So let's not use this. I'm going to cross this out and write too much unknown information or too many unknowns. I want less unknowns. So let's use similar triangles to rewrite the radius in terms of the height. So I'm just gonna draw an arbitrary radius. So here, or not radius, diameter right there. And this would be any r. And this would be the height at that point. And let me erase, now that's a radius, perfect. And let me make sure this is clear that this is the midpoint or the midline down the cone. So let's use similar triangles. We see that this one is to r, what two is to h. We have one over r equals two over h. So this is true if and only if r is equal to 
h over 2. And that's just some algebra. Wonderful. So now let's rewrite this volume equation. And instead of r, I'm going to write h over 2. Square that times h. So I have pi over 3 h cubed over, oh, excuse me, 4. 2 squared is 4. So that is, let me just rewrite the whole thing, as volume now is equal to h cubed pi over 12. Now I can take the derivative implicitly on both sides, so the change in volume with respect to time is equal to pi over 12, a constant, times 3h squared times dh over dt. And let me scooch this up a bit. There we go. So dv over dt is equal to pi over 4h squared times dh over dt. I want to know the rate at which the water is changing when the height is one foot. So let me replace what I do know. I know that dv over dt is 0 0.03 negative. I have a pi over 4 here. And then I have a 1 half here. And I'm going to square this quantity. So I have negative 0 0.03 equals pi over 4 times 2 squared is 16. dh over dt. And then let's keep going with this. So dh over dt, if I multiply both sides by the reciprocal of pi over 16, so that would be 16 over pi, we end up with negative 0 0.03 times 16 over pi. And so the change in height becomes about negative 0 0.15278874540. Or we can round it. Ooh. So every second, this water level is going down by about 0.153 feet. So the follow-up question here, at what rate is the height of the water changing when the height of the water is a quarter foot? Well, the only difference is this. So see if you can figure out independently what this value is. So what the answer to this second part is, at what rate is the height of the water changing when the height of the water is one quarter foot? Well, if you notice, we only use the one half foot here. So that's the only change. See if you can figure that out independently. Pause your video and try that now. So for the second part, when h equals a quarter foot, we end up with dh over dt is equal to negative 0 0.03 times, and instead of 16 now, we have 4 times 4 squared, so we have 64 over pi, and that is about negative 0.611 feet per second. And I'm going to zoom out so you can see the entire problem. And that concludes the video for example four.